Hello, and welcome back to the Ninox Learning Channel. My name is Andy. I'm a Ninox programmer and trainer with Nioxys Corporation. In this class, we're going to take a look at how we duplicate records. Ninox does provide a button that allows us to instantly duplicate the record that we have on screen and create a copy of it in the current table. What I'm talking about is using the Ninox programming language to create a duplicate of the records in one table in a different table. Not only duplicating the records, but moving those duplicates or creating those duplicates in a completely different table structure in the Ninox database. We're going to start there, and then we're going to move on to an even higher level of complexity and look at how we can duplicate an entire data family or data stack. The system that we're going to be using in this class to study this data duplication technique is the Nioxys Project Management System. This is a tool, an application solution that you can download from the Nioxys portal, our member portal at www.nioxys.com. If you'd like to download it now, go ahead and click pause, log into the portal, and download the Project Management Solution application, and you can follow along with the video. If you'd like to download it after you view the video, you can go ahead and do that, and then watch the video later again. So let's go ahead and begin. Now before we get into the actual process of creating duplicate records and making those duplicates uh, exist in a different table from where they originated, let's take a look at the project management system and, and gain an understanding of the environment in which this process is going to be studied and to find some use cases in the reasons why this process is so valuable. The system that we're looking at, as I mentioned, is project management. It's even kind of a mini job costing, job tracking system. And it certainly can be expanded uh, into something quite sophisticated. But even the way it is now, as you download it from our member portal, it's a very suitable multi-level job and project tracking system where you can track costs, you can track bids, you can track gross margin at multiple levels of granularity across a project. Let's start by looking at the resources that we use within a project. And in our resource library, we have labor, materials, and tools and machines. Our labor is broken up between labor that we employ, employees of our company, versus vendors or subcontractors, human resources and labor that we engage but we engage them on a subcontracted basis. They're not necessarily employees of our company. Now those resources, the human resources, the goods and materials, and the tools and machines that we use are used to build out projects. And a project is broken up into three levels. A single project consists of multiple jobs. Each job consists of multiple tasks. And each task requires certain resources, labor, materials, and tools. Now, as we build up a project, for example, as we lay out and define the resources that we need at the lower level, those costs in our bids begin to bubble up. So all of the resources roll up to become the cost for a single task. And the cost of all of the tasks roll up to be the cost of the job. And the costs of all of the jobs that we have to do to complete the project, when those are added up, they roll up to be the total project cost. To add one more layer of complexity to this, we introduce the concept of a template. A template is a reusable asset, a boilerplate, if you will, that is Jobs that we do over and over again, where we just want to copy over the template, make a few changes, and get on with our work. So for example, let's say we work in construction. 
and we build houses. We build one kind of house and we build it over and over and over again in multiple neighborhoods. It's pretty much the same project over and over again. Takes about the same number of hours, requires the same raw materials, and really requires the same tools and machinery. So instead of starting each job from scratch, we would like to duplicate all of the content for a selected template, let that be the basis for our actual project, and then modify the template on an as-needed basis. Makes it much easier for us to have multiple projects going without having to add dozens or even hundreds of line items over and over and over again when those line items are pretty much the same across all of our jobs. So, we have resources that we allocate to projects. Projects are broken down into jobs. Jobs are broken down into tasks. Tasks are broken down into the human, material, and tool or machinery resources necessary to complete the task. And the projects start out as templates, which we copy over in mass and then modify on an as-needed project-by-project basis. And this is where our data stack or data family duplication becomes so valuable. Imagine a single project that consists of two jobs, and each job consists of two tasks, and each task requires some labor, some materials, and some tools. That's two times two is four times three is 12. 12 line items for that one very, very simple job. If I have to do that job 10 times, 10 different houses that are being built, I'd have to enter 120 individual records into my system. But by creating a single template, defining the 12 lines, the two, two jobs, each with two tasks, each with three material requirements or resource requirements, I create the 12 lines one time instead of 10 and just copy the entire stack, the entire project template family in mass over to the project. We're not simply duplicating the records of one table and moving them to another table. We are duplicating the records of one parent table and three child tables in one step. And then putting those duplicates in a separate parent with its own three separate children. All the data in four tables moving and being duplicated to four other tables with a single click of the mouse. That's what we're going to learn how to do in this class when we talk about duplicating data and duplicating entire data stacks or families. Let's start by looking at a template. I'll close these up. And we have already created a template to do a paver patio. We're gonna build a patio in someone's backyard. A paver patio consists of two jobs, site preparation and installation. And for each job, we wanna track our cost, how much we're bidding the job, and the total profit margin, which is of course what we are paid, our bid price, less our out-of-pocket cost. Now, as I said, and as we can see here in our architecture, this template, the paver patio template, consists of two jobs, but each job consists of multiple tasks. Here we see the first job, site preparation. Site preparation consists of two tasks, setting the foundation and prepping the lot. These tasks each require resources, for example, the foundation setting requires 10 hours of labor and the lot prep requires some materials, some machinery, and a number of other things. We also, as a reminder, are tracking our total cost, our bid price, and our profit margin at the individual task level, the individual materials level, materials roll up to tasks, task totals roll up to jobs, and job totals will roll up to 
the project, or in this case, template total. So that's our hierarchy. One template for one project consisting of two jobs, each job consisting of two tasks, each task consisting of one or multiple materials, labor, or tools and machinery requirements. Let's say we just won a contract. We put out our bid. The bid was accepted. We have now been hired to install the paver patio. It's time to set up an actual job. We're going to leave our project templates mode or module and go into the project module where we have absolutely nothing right now. I'm going to create a new project by clicking on the blank line and going into form view. And I'm going to start by defining the template that is going to be used as the boilerplate, as the model for this particular job. And watch what happens. I click on the field project template. I select the template for a paver patio. And just like that, my two jobs, all of my tasks, and all of my resources are copied over from the template family here to the actual project family or data stack. And now I can make a few changes. Let's say that the labor for the foundation setting for this particular job is going to be a lot more complicated. It's a much bigger job. Instead of 10 hours, we need 50 hours. At $300 per unit and 50 units, our out-of-pocket cost is $15,000. We're going to bid it at $500 per labor unit, which means our bid is $25,000, which means we're going to have a margin, a profit, of $10,000. The $25,000 we bid and were paid, less the $15,000 we spent on the labor to get this particular task completed. The important thing to look at here, though, is I went into one field. I made one selection and two jobs, four tasks, and six lines of resource requirements were all created in three different tables in addition to the one record, the project record, which was created in the parent table. So we have the parent table and three children, four different tables, all of which were automatically populated with two, six, 12, and one more makes 13 different records. All of them populated and, just, and built automatically by Ninox, simply by my telling the system, select this template and use it as the baseline for this particular job. Now, as long as we're here, and before we get into the code that enabled all of that to work, let me show you a couple other bells and whistles that we built into the system. This project management dashboard not only contains the summary information, and here we see our total project cost, our total project bid, and our total margin on the entire project, but we also see the project broken down into jobs, jobs broken down into tasks, tasks broken down into resource requirements with individual line items for cost, bid, and margin at the most granular all the way up to the most macro or summary level of analysis. Not only are we able to look at this particular project in terms of the project, the jobs, the tasks, the resources in a line item manner, but we can look at it graphically. Here we see a bar chart showing us the total resource details, our labor, our machinery, and our materials, and all three components of each, the cost, the bid, the margin. Here we see just our profit margins broken down across the three different categories, labor, machinery, materials. We can see here that of the total job, if this circle is 100% of our profit, the least amount of profit is coming from our machinery, the most profit is coming from our materials, and right in the middle is the $10,000 in profit we're making on labor. 
if I look at this, I can see that my machinery margin is really, really low. Maybe I want to bump that up a little bit. So I'm going to go in here, and instead of having a cost of 10000 and a bid of 15000 I'd like to have a cost of 10000 and a bid price of double that. So we're going to bid it out at 30000 And instantly, we see the changes reflected in our profit margin analysis and our overall resource distribution and analysis of cost, income, and net margin or profit margin. But how did it all happen? Let's dive in and see what we did. I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to delete this job, create a new record, and show you again how I can select a single template and have all of the data created automatically. You have probably guessed at this point that there is a trigger associated with this project template field. And if that was your guess, you guessed correctly. When this field was changed, when it went from blank to not blank, something happened. A trigger was pulled. Let's go into administrative mode and let's look at that trigger. I will select the field to expose the parameters, go into more options, and sure enough, there is the trigger after update. And it's remarkably brief. 26 lines of code, and really only, well, let's see here. Just that many from line 3 to line 21. Just 18 lines of code necessary to create these very, very complex families or templates and move them into our project file. Now, before we dive into this particular code block, let's look at the process by which information or data records in one table can be replicated in a different table. And to do this, I'm simply going to create two new tables. New table one is the source table, and we're going to have a text field called text field one, and we're going to have a number field called number field one. And finally, another text field called text field two. I'm then going to create a new table called destination. To keep it simple, I'm going to use the same data model in the destination table that I used in the source table. Text field number one, number field number one, text field number two. If I create records in the source table, and I'll go ahead and do that. Here we have record one, which has the number one, which has text field two has a one. And I'll then create record two, which has the number two, and this is text field number two. And finally, record three has the number three and the field text three. Three fields, three records in one table. So there we have it. One table, our source table, three records, each record, three fields, not including the one field, the numeric ID field that Ninox created and populated automatically. What I want to do is be able to take the contents of any one of these records, duplicate it with the duplicate showing up in the destination table. Now, as I said when we started, it's very easy to duplicate a record in the current table. The current table right now is the source table. I can easily go into record three. I'll turn off administrative mode. Go to this icon, the duplicate record icon, click it, make one change, change that to a four, that to a four, and that to a four. And now my three records are four records because I duplicated record number three and edited it or modified it to turn into record four. The duplicate record button is a fast, simple, easy way 
to copy the current record into the current table. The current record in this case is record number two. The current table is the source table. If I want 10 duplicate copies of this record in this table, that's just 10 easy clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and there we go. 10 identical duplicate copies of the second record of this table. I don't really need those, so I'm going to select just those rows, right click, and delete the copies that I just created. And while we're at it, let's get rid of record number four. Don't really need that one anyway. What I do need is a single button that I can click, like the duplicate record button, that will create a copy of the current record, but not in the current table, in the destination table. This is the source of data. The other table is the destination of this data. How do we do it? Let's go in, back into administrative mode, and let's grab a layout element that is the button. This button is going to be our trigger. And it is going to be a trigger that duplicates record in destination table. When I click this button, I want everything in the current record to be copied into a new record in this the destination table. Let's see how we do that. Back into administrative mode, and let's create a little code block so when we click the button or pull this trigger, the current record is duplicated with the duplicate showing up, not in the current table, but the new table. It's this easy. Let's create three variables. I will say that the variable field one is equal to the first field. The, the variable field number two is equal to the second field. And the variable field three is equal to the third field. I then am going to create another variable, which is going to be the pointer. What is it pointing to? The new record that we want to create in the destination table. Let i equal a newly created record in the destination table. So create destination. I don't need single quotes because the name of the table is one word with no spaces. Now, <clears throat> I is pointing to the record that was just created. This record has three fields. I want to populate them. So I will specify that the field in record I, the newly created record called text1, is equal to the value in the current record. The field number one in the same table is going to be equal to the second field. And the third field, which I know is called text2, is going to be equal to the third field. We have an error. We have a problem. It says, I at line six, column one, an end was expected. Don't forget, folks, you have to use the semicolon to indicate the end of a line in Ninox on all but the last line. I will save this code and go back in and take a quick look. We have three variables created here. Those three variables each take on the value of the three fields in the current record of the current table. This is the source table. We then create a new blank record in the table that is to contain the duplicate. And that table is named destination. And the record that we are going to create, this new blank record, we will simply refer to it as I. I is a variable that we created using the let statement. 
Now, because I is pointing to the new record, we only need then to find the values for the three fields in the new record. The field text one in new record I is going to receive the same value as the contents of text one in the source record. Same for number one in text two. The three fields in the newly created record I in the destination table will contain the exact same data, hence a duplicate or an identical copy, as the three fields in the record in the source table that was the original record we wished to copy. Let us save our changes, exit administrative mode. Let's see if it works. The destination table is empty. The source table has three records. I want to du duplicate record number three. And now, there it is. Record number three is now copied not only into a second record, but a new record in a completely different table. If I want duplicates of record one and record two, it's as simple as selecting the records, clicking the button, and there they are. They exist in the destination table in the order in which I duplicated them. Let's review how we made the duplicate. We collected the values of the record we wanted to copy. We created a new blank record in the table where we want the copy to exist. And we then populated the fields in the newly created record with the values in the original record, which is the record that was being duplicated in the first place. Collect your source, create your destination, populate your destination. That's all there is to it. In this particular exercise, and I'm going to go back to our data model, we see that our source table here and our destination table here have no relationship, no inner join, no family relationship, no outer join. We are able to move pieces of content from one table to another simply by using this code structure. Collect the source, create the new record where you in the table in which you want it to exist, populate the contents of the new record. No link, no relationship necessary between the source of the data and the destination of the copied or duplicate data. Now, as I mentioned earlier, and as we saw when we first started, there's a little bit more to it than just copying one record with three fields into another table, which has one new record, and we populate the three fields. In fact, as we look at our families, we see that the source of our content is a family of four tables, a parent table called template with three children, and that content, that template, is to be duplicated, not just out of the one parent table, but out of all that parent's children tables. All of that is to be copied and duplicated into this destination or project table. So this adds a new concern. Not only must we duplicate the content of the source template table, and have that duplicate information or content show up in the destination project table, we not only need to copy or duplicate the content, but we also must duplicate the relationships between the content. Simply putting all of the template data into the different tables of the project stack without letting Ninox know which resources are related to which tasks and which tasks are related to which jobs and which jobs go with which project, if those relationships do not copy over with the content, 
well then we have not effectively done our job because there'll be no way for Ninox to know what information or content at this very granular low resource level is connected to the higher levels of task, job, and ultimately the highest level in the family, the project level. So we're not only going to duplicate the content, we're going to duplicate the relationship between all the content as we move one family or stack of data over to another family or a separate stack. Now you do see a link here from the destination to the source. What this link is saying is, when I'm here in my project table, I want to be able to go into a field and look up all of my templates. And as soon as I select one of those templates, I want all of the template data and template job data and template task data and template resource requirement data to be duplicated, populated in the corresponding parent or child table over here at the destination with all relationships intact. Let's see how we did it. We know the trigger exists here in the project table. I went into the project. I went into this linked field that allows me to look up all of my templates. And when I selected one of the templates, all of the magic happened. Let's look at the code that is part of this trigger. It's a little more complex than the code we looked at just a few moments ago, but it does exactly the same three things. It copies the source, creates a blank record at the destination, and then populates the data in the newly created destination record. There is a twist. There are multiple records being copied, and those records are spread out across multiple tables, so we have to maintain the parent-child or family relationship. Let's go slowly and take it one line at a time. We start by collecting the ID of the current record. In this case, this is the ID of, and I'm going to create a brand new job. I'm going to go back to my projects listing and create a brand new project. We start by selecting a template, but before we even do that, we record the ID number of the record that is this new job. And we record that ID number in a newly created variable called X current record or capital C U R R capital R E C. X tells me it's a variable and this abbreviation tells me it's the variable which is the identifier or the ID of the current record. I then collect the current information. I create a variable. I know it's a variable because it begins with X and the variable is called template. This variable is going to contain the value that is now in the project template field. Let's take a quick look at that. Here is my project template field. This is my current record. It's still blank. The first two lines of code say, capture the ID of the current blank record and capture the ID of the template we selected and store it in this variable called X template, capital T M P L T. The next step is to begin the process of moving the family or stack of data from the template stack into the project stack. The next line of code is a for statement. This is a loop. And what it does is a couple of things. First, it brings into existence a new variable called i. i is a counter. What is it counting? It is counting the number of records in the project template where the ID of that record is equal to the contents of this variable. And what is the contents of this variable? 
the project template we selected to be the foundation, the boilerplate for this new project. Once we have selected the highest level, the project template or parent record, we immediately go into another for loop, which requires us to create or bring into existence another variable, this one called J. What does J contain? What is J counting? Because we learned a moment ago that this clause, for variable name in select, creates a variable and has that variable counting something. What is it counting? It's counting the records in the selection, this subset or array of records. So we started by creating a subset of records in the project templates table that consisted of one record, an array of one record, the one template that we want to copy to become this new project. We then immediately duplicated that clause for variable in select. So now we have a new variable counting something new. What is that new variable counting? It is counting all of the jobs where that job record is linked back to the record defined in the variable i. What record is defined in the variable i? Well, it's each one of the records in the project template. Remember, we selected a template that consists of two jobs making up the project, two tasks making up each job, and multiple resources making up each task. So we select the template, and then we say select all of the jobs for this template. Remember that first step is to gather the source. Here is all of our source data right here. The source is this clause. All jobs that are part of this single particular template. Now what was the second step after we gathered our source information? We created a new blank record. Here we have selected records in the job template file. We now want to create a new blank record in the actual job file. That new record in the job file is going to be pointed to using this newly created variable x new job. I use x to indicate it as a variable and the words capital N-E-W capital J-O-B to tell me what kind of variable it is. It is a pointer that is pointing to the new and so far blank record in the job table. What was the third step? The first step was to capture the source data. We did that right here. The next step was to create a blank record in the destination. We did that right here. And then finally, the third step is to populate the newly created record. The newly created record is being pointed to with this variable. The newly created record has two fields, the name of the job and the project to which that job is linked. This line populates the new record, the field in the new record called job name, with the value in the old record. The old record is being pointed to here with the variable j. j is pointing to the source records in the template file. x new job is pointing to the destination record here in the actual job table. So the new field in the new record is going to contain the value in the old field of the source or the old record. This 
line here, line six, is picking up or making a duplicate copy of the data that was in the template and reproducing an exact copy of it in the newly created record in my job file. The next line has the very important task of establishing the relationship between this newly created job record and the parent or the project record to which it is linked. Remember, we created a brand new parent or project record. Let's do this again. I'll delete this one. We're going to start over. I'm going to click the plus sign. Boom. A brand new blank record in the parent table called project. We then are going to pull a trigger in this newly created parent record. And when we pull that trigger, we're going to copy the data in the template table. And for each template, we're going to copy all of the jobs in that template, create a new job record here in my new project file, populate the data, the job name, and establish the relationship, the project of the record in the new job is X current record. What is the value of X current record? Remember where we started, it is the ID number of the current record, which is the new project. We created the parent record here when we clicked the plus sign. This is the blank record. The trigger gets pulled by selecting a template. We create a new record in the job child table. We populate the one field in the job child table. And we then link that job record back to its parent or the project record that is being pointed to using the variable x current record. But we must continue. We're only two levels deep. We manually created the new record in the parent project table. Here on line five, Ninox created the new record in the job table. So parent level, second level. There's a third level, the tasks. Tasks exist underneath jobs. And a fourth level, resources. Resources exist underneath tasks. So let us continue. In review, we manually created the new project. Ninox created a new job within that project. And then linked that job back to the new project. On line seven there. We then immediately start over again. We create a new variable called K. And K is pointing to a selection of records. And what do you suppose that selection is? It is all of the tasks in the template task table that make up the template job. How do we know what the current job of the current template is in the context of these nested loops? It's variable J. J is where we are one at a time selecting each job that is part of the template that we wish to duplicate. We select the template, pick up the first job, create a new job, link that new job back to the new project. Then we pick up all of the tasks for that new job, create a new task, copy the data from the source task to the destination task, and link the task back to the new job. And then we do it again. We create another variable called M. M is counting a selection of records or an array, which is all of the resources 
that are tied to the current task. How do we know what the current task is? It's being pointed at here in the variable k. We select the source. We create a new blank record in the destination. In this case, we select the resource requirements from the template and create a blank resource requirement in the project table. We copy over all of the information into the new resource record field by field. The resource type, the labor, the materials, the tools and machinery, the quantity, the unit cost, the bid price. All of these lines here, lines 14 through 20, are copying the source data, and here is the source, the resource requirements for this particular task. We are populating that data in the newly created job resource record, and then the very last step is to link or preserve the parent-child relationship where this job resource requirement record that is newly created is linked back to its parent. What is the parent of the fourth bottom level resource requirements? It's the third level, tasks. What task is the parent of this newly created job resource record with all of this content? Why, it is the task that was created right here. And what are we using to identify that new task? The variable x new task. So the task field in the newly created resource requirement is pointing back to its parent task. The job field in the child task table, and this is the newly created task, is pointing back to its parent job. And we see that right here. This is where we created the parent job. And the parent job is pointing back to its parent, the highest level, the project table in our new project. Take a deep breath. Let's quickly review and then watch it in action. We select a template. We do that here. We, one at a time, select all of the jobs that are part of that template. And for each job, one at a time, we select all of the tasks, one task at a time. Select a job, select the first task in the job, and for that task, select all of the resource requirements, copy all the resource requirements, link that task back up to the new job, link that job back up to the new project. When we are done creating the lowest level, the resource requirements, start over again. We end all of this and return to the next job, job number two. And we copy all of the tasks for job number two, one task at a time. And as we copy each task, we copy all of the resource requirements for that task. Let's look at this process again, not from a code perspective, but from a data perspective. We are here in the project family. We're at the highest level in the project table. We use this link to look back into our project templates and select one. And when we select one, a trigger is pulled and a block of code immediately goes into action. The first thing the block of code does is record the ID of our new project record. It then one at a time creates a new job for every record that is a job in the template of the project template we selected. And for each job, it creates a new task, one at a time, all of the tasks 
that are linked back to the job. And for each task, it creates all of the resources. So what it's doing is it's kind of creating loops within loops within loops. We have one big loop to create a new project. Then we have something that's going to loop twice to create the two new jobs. But before it creates the second job, it's going to create the two tasks in the first job. It's going to start with the first task and create all the resources for that task, then go to the second task, create all the resources for that task. That will mean job one is done. Then it will go to job two, create the first task for job two with all of its resources, the second task for job two and all of its resources. The tasks will then roll up to the new job. Now we have new job one and new job two, each with new task one and new task two and all of their resources, and that all rolls up to the new project. Let's once again see it in action. I will delete these two records. Click on the blank line. Exit administrative mode, go into my full screen form, select a template, and let Ninox do the rest. This ability to collect the source information, create a new blank record in the destination, and then take that source data, copy it, and use the copy to populate the fields in the newly created record in the destination allows us to not only duplicate data, allows us to not only duplicate data and move the duplicate to a different location, a location that may or may not even be linked to the source, but allows us to copy entire families or stacks of data, like this four family member stack called templates copy all of the records that make up one template, and we determined there were 12 such records, and move those 12 records into the correct table with the correct parent-child relationships in an entirely different family, or in this case, the project stack. That is the Nioxis Job Cost or Project Management Module. Head over to www.nioxis.com Download your free copy out of the member portal, use it as is, or open it up and enhance it to meet your specific and unique needs. In fact, you can even integrate it with the accounts receivable module we looked at in the previous class, and we're going to have an accounts payable module coming up in next week's class. We're slowly going to have you building your own Ninox ERP or Enterprise Management System. One module at a time, and as we look at each module, we're going to learn some very cool, powerful features in the Ninox system. Thank you so much for joining me in this class. Thank you for being part of the Ninox Global Community. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you enjoyed this class. And I hope to see you back at the next class here on the Nioxis Ninox Learning Channel. Bye-bye, everybody.